Hello and welcome to this tutorial in my series Getting Started with the A Modular System. I made a video yesterday about five oscillators and how they work together in a drone. And although when you look at it, it looks fairly complicated patch, there are lots of cables everywhere, but actually it is really very simple. And in this video, I just want to show you how these different simple patch points or, or patch connections together create a rather compelling complex piece. So I hope you will enjoy this and I will go through it very slowly. Um, yeah, and please let me know if uh, you have any suggestions or any um, ideas on how to improve on this and um, just leave the comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. So this is the patch for the 5 oscillator drone. As you can see there are a lot of cables going everywhere and it looks like there's a lot going on and there is but everything here is actually very simple. So let's start from the end where everything goes out and then work our way backwards. The first thing is that there is one voice here on level on channel number one and there are three other voices on two, three and four. And the main drone is actually on channel number one which is coming from this mixer up here and I'm mixing four different oscillators together to produce this one drone voice here. And the output of this mixer goes into the SV filter. And so that means that four oscillators are being mixed together, going into the state variable filter, and that goes into channel number one. So what are these four oscillators? So these four oscillators are those four from the two OCD here at the side. So the first two from this module are going into the VCA at the top here and then from the VCA into the channel 1 and 2. The two oscillator voices from the second OECD module are going to another VCA which is down here in my system. So this is where you have a bigger system with a lot of VCAs and they are you know, distributed. Sometimes you need very long cables. And then from this VCA, again, they are going into the channel 2, 3 and 4 on this mix up here. So really, the first voice on mix on this end mixer here is the sum of those four oscillators that are coming in. Now you can see that I have slightly detuned all of them. So a 1 and 2 are just slightly off uh, pitched differently and 3 and 4 are quite quite different. And to tell the, the truth, I didn't use a, a, a tuner for that at all. I just kind of tuned it the way I, it felt okay to me. So if you have perfect pitch, you might wince a little bit. But uh, for me it's okay. What is really important is that if you just sum those four oscillators together, it actually doesn't sound really well because they go at the same time and you may get like a chord thing and some harmony, but it's, it's, it's very static. There's not much to it. So what I did was in the VCAs, I chose uh, the output of an LFO to fade the individual voices in and out. So the LFO here, so this one, is um, changing the amplitude on the first VCA on, on oscillator number one. And on oscillator number two, I have another LFO, uh, this one here, that changes that, but it's slightly at a different rate. So whereas oscillator one is pretty slow, um, oscillator number two is slightly faster. And I'm really doing the same thing for the other two voices. So down here you can see that this VCA also has modulation, but because I was running out of 
out of LFOs, I'm using those two envelopes to, to drive that. And the first envelope is being triggered by the pulse with, of this LFO. So every time this LFO completes a cycle, it sends a pulse, and then it triggers this envelope, which is set to quite slow, and it will then, then, then drive the amplitude of this third voice. And the fourth oscillator, again, is an envelope that's being triggered by the pulse out of this other LFO up here. And again, it triggers a very slow envelope, which uh, fades in that fourth voice in and out. So you can see with two LFOs and two envelopes and uh, those two dual VCAs, I can create quite a, a rhythmic variation. So let's see how that sounds like. I just turn on the voice one on the mixer and then I will slowly, just as in my video before, fade in each individual oscillator. So channel number one first, oscillator number one first. So you can hear that uh, because it's coming from the VCA1, um, which is driven by this LFO here, it is fairly slow, going in and out. And then when I bring in the second oscillator, which is driven by this other LFO here, it should be a little bit faster. So you can hear that uh, the second oscillator comes in at a much shorter cycle, and sometimes they meet. And then I bring in the third oscillator. This oscillator has more of a plucking sound because it's coming from this envelope down here, which has a very short attack. It's also very sharp, so I usually tune that down a bit. And oscillator number four is from this side here, and you can see that the pitch is fairly low, so this is a bit of a, a bass. coming in there very slowly because it's coming from this envelope down here, which has a, a, quite a long attack and a very long decay. What you were also able to hear was another trick that I did to make this more interesting and that the state variable filter where all those mixed oscillators are going in is also modulated. And here I have the resonance quite high and the frequency such, set just so that normally there's always something coming through, but if the modulation uh, uh, goes higher, then sometimes it goes into an just almost self-resonating mode. So it gives that brightness. And this is coming from another envelope here. And this envelope is being triggered by a trick 164. So here I'm using um, the clock output from the end of one envelope to clock this trigger, this uh, trigger sequencer. And on every second step, I start this envelope to drive the resonance um, of this filter a bit forward. So just to delay things, to put things in that are, you know, unexpected or coming at different times as all these different uh, shifting rhythms are 
are, are going apart and coming together and just putting in a little bit of variation. So you can hear that now. So here you can see that this trigger advances one more step here, which triggers this. But now there wasn't a sound, so you didn't really hear anything. So we need to switch on more oscillators. And here it comes. And here's the envelope. Slowly opening up the filter. Okay, so there are more, more voices in here though, so I felt that it needed a little bit more of a deeper sound to um, complement this. And uh, what's really beautiful about the two OSCD modules is that you get a sub oscillator together with every oscillator. So this is a pitch, I think it's probably an octave down, and you can just take that and in here I put that through the null filter into the low pass and that goes into um, level level number four. So let's let's have a look at, at this. Very simple. This is also just using a, another LFO that I have down here to open and close the cutoff frequency of this filter. Another more bassy sound is actually coming from the VCO. So here I'm using a triangle wave, which I put through the signal amp, because the triangle wave from the VCO module is a little bit uh, low, the signal. So usually I boost it up in the signal amplifier, and that goes into my WASP filter. And again, that WASP filter is also modulated by, um, by a, an envelope and Again, that just gives it a little bit of uh, a variation. So let's listen to what the triangle wave on the VCO does. WASP filter is so beautiful and especially if you slowly modulate the cutoff frequency with a little bit of extra resonance, it just um, has this throaty, full sound um, that really fits well as a, as a kind of a bass underlay under any melody. Now, this is actually all there is to this patch and um, I could have left it there, but I really love the Solina string machine, so I thought, can I fit it in? And this is on channel number three, it's just the Solina. And with the Solina string machine, you have to manually switch the chords.
So the most uh, challenging part here was to um, change the fine and coarse frequency so that the pitch didn't clash with my other notes. So all of that together really was the four oscillator uh, channel together with the fifth oscillator, which is the throaty wasp filter. together with the sub-oscillator and the Nile filter and then adding the Solina string module on top. And there you go, a lot of cables, but really very simple patch lines here. I'm just using the VCAs and the LFOs together with some filters and the, oscill the sub-oscillator. And then there's really just the trigger sequencer to give me a little bit of variation on the timing. And that's really all there is to it. One other thing I want to point out though is that you can see that I used all those yellow cables here to uh, drive the pitch from the MIDI bus. And in fact, I actually set the bass note using my MIDI keyboard. And that is, I think, a C2 or C3 that I've um, pitched it to. And then I changed the frequency uh, to something that just sounded okay to me. I'm also using the MultiFX module, so the output of the final mixer goes into the MultiFX. And here I'm using just the first reverb with uh, quite a lot of wet and a little bit of dry. And uh, that just gives it space um, and room to breathe. And that is all there is to this patch. Um, have a great day. Bye.